G'day Fisho, Sammy here. Thanks for tuning in. Now today we're talking about a style of fishing that I absolutely love and that's chasing dewies or mulloway off the rocks or rock walls on hard bodies and soft plastics. Now I don't know whether I'm just a sucker for punishment or I enjoy the challenge but as every good dewy fisherman will know that nine times out of ten when you go chasing dewies on hard bodies and softies you're going to come home empty handed. But that one time it pays off, it makes it all the worthwhile. So I'm going to go through all the gear that I use and I'll take with me and uh, hopefully you guys can get out and chase it for yourselves. Now after this, I've got a bit of footage from a recent session. It's pretty red hot so stick around and check that out at the end. I'm going to start off with rods and reels. Obviously I use a surf rod off the rocks, so I don't have that here because it wouldn't fit in the, in the frame but I use a 12 foot surf rod and that's 10 to 15 kilo rating. So that's got a serious amount of grunt. I know that I can dictate the terms of the fight with a dewfish close to the rocks if he does something I don't want him to do, or with the smaller fish, I can actually lift them up the rocks when I'm landing them. So big, strong surf rod is a definite must have. Now, moving on to spinning reels, I've got a 10,000 Stella, and I have that spooled with 40 pound mono. Now, I don't actually use braid when I'm casting for dewfish, and the reason behind that is because Jewies love to hang around the rocks. They love to run around the rocks when they're hooked. So braid just doesn't last as long. With the 40 pound mono, I've got a good chance that when that fish runs around the rocks, I can free spool it or lighten the drag off and that fish might turn around and that line won't break. Whereas braid, once she hits the rocks under pressure, nine times out of 10, it's gonna blow. So get yourself some mono if you're really serious about your dew fishing. Um, I strongly recommend it, as do a lot of the guys that have taught me the ways of the dewy. Now moving on to lures, we're gonna look at soft plastics first. So I like to have my soft plastics imitate small bait fish. Uh, Jewfish are very predatory species. They really do feed aggressively on all types of bait, whether it be little mullet, uh, herring, garfish, anything like that. Anything they can get their lips around pretty well, they'll eat. So I like to use quite large profiled soft plastics with big paddle tails. Now those paddle tails kick out a lot of vibration in the water. The dewies can hunt them out, feel that vibration come through come in for the kill. Now, all of these styles, they've all got the uh, the paddle tail in, in common. They all kind of roughly look like a mullet. Doesn't really matter what color you throw. I like to throw white and black. It's just personal preference. Everyone does kind of lean towards their own personal preference when it comes to dew fishing, but these are my confidence lures. Now, the situations I'd fish these guys in would be off the rocks in small wash zones or around the base of rock walls. Because they're weighted, you can sink them all the way down the bottom, fish them in the gnarly terrain without getting snagged that much. Now, just slow hops off the bottom or even a slow roll is enough to, to get a dewy's attention and hopefully get a hit. So, around the base of the rock walls, off the rocks, just in the deeper holes, your soft plastics is going to be a good, cost-effective way of fishing those areas because they don't snag up that much, and if they do, it's not the end of the world when you break one off. Now, if you're feeling a little bit fancy, you can go for something like this. This is a Savage Gear Rattle Shad. Now, if that isn't a mullet imitation that whets the appetite, I don't know what is, because have a go at that. Now, I haven't actually caught a fish on this yet. I've only thrown it a handful of times, but I can see this being a solid addition to my kit this season. They're only new, uh, big rattle tail. They've got a rattle in there, but big paddle tail, sorry. And they're gonna create a heap of vibration in the water, cause a heap of commotion, hopefully. Big Dewey's going to sniff that out and uh, and smack it down. Now it does have the stinger treble on the bottom, which means it will get snagged on the places where you'd be fishing these, and they'll be sitting on the bottom like that. So I can see these. You cast them off the rock wall into sa on, onto sand bottoms, um, or slow roll them like you would a hard body. Anything like that, this is going to be perfect for. Now while we're on soft plastics, another one by Savage Gear is this guy here. This is a big line through trout. Another awesome mullet imitation. Again, I haven't used one of these yet, but I can see it being an absolute epic dew lure. It looks and swims really, really well. So when they're feeding on the big schools of mullet, I think if you slow roll that through there, it's gonna be game over. Now I've rigged this with two trebles on the bottom there. I've taken them off for storage, but um, there's two, two toe points for the trebles. And that just gives me a bit more hook coverage because it is quite a big lure. Um, again, you're not going to want to let this one hit the bottom because it will snag up and you don't want to be losing one of these every second cast because you're going to go poor. Anyway, that's my soft plastic options. Now, on to hard bodies. Now, with hard bodies, they really aren't that fussy to be honest. You talk to 
you talk to five different Jew fishermen, they'll give you five different lures that work really well. So I think it's more a matter of getting that lure in their face and getting it to swim in the right areas at the right depth and they're just gonna come out and smash it. So I've got a nice selection here. I've got a little dizzy plug, which I've had for years. I've got, I've got a Levy lure by Mick Levy. That's caught a couple of fish, as has this one. I've got a, oh, I've got the tablecloth first. Can't you come? I've got a croaker lure by Steve Patty. Another great imitation, nice roll on it. Caught my PB Dewey on one of these. And then I've got an old Bill's Bug. And that guy, vintage Dew lure, big chair leg lure, big wide action. Now, with the, with the hard bodies, it's just a matter of putting in the cast. You fish them in all the same areas you would your, your soft plastics, but obviously with the bibs, that defines how deep they go. So you got a nice wide, uh, fish swimming in through the wash. You fish them in your wash zones off the rocks, around bommies, base of rock walls, along rock walls, all those places where dewies will hang and feed. Now, obviously your larger lures there, they're gonna be imitating a serious bit of bait. So mullet, when the mullet are running, when there's tailor around, that's when the dewies are gonna be looking for, for food around this profile. So I usually wait till winter when the, the stereotypical mullet run is, and that's when the, the dewies do become more active and feed on those bigger baits, which in which case you can chuck those bigger lures at them. Uh, it is simply just a matter of keeping casting, being in the right areas and putting in those casts. Uh, as you'll see, I was fishing in some pretty miserable uh, conditions coming up, but the fish were there, and that just means you've got to be there when the fish are there. So best of luck with it all guys. Check out the footage coming up, but hope you get stuck into a few. It might take you a little while. I know it took me like eight years to get my first serious Dewey, but the rewards are worth it when you finally do get that big one. Good luck guys. Hope you, uh, hope you get stuck into a few. Cheers. Where are you going to try and bring him up? Me? Yep. Yep.